Psalms <clears throat> chapter 39. Written with this would be James 3 5. To the chief musician, even to Jeduthim, a psalm of David. Jeduthim is a Levite chief singer and instructor. 1 Corinthians 9 16 and other references thereof. I said, I will take heed to my ways, Proverbs 17, 27, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle, that's James 3, 3, while the wicked is before me. And notice the wicked before me is to keep your watch your mouth around those who are not Christians, those who are not of God. And James speaks about the tongue, it's lit with the hellfire. It speaks of salt and sweet water, which ought not be so. I was dumb with silence. Now, dumb in the Bible does not mean good. It means unable to speak. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. It remained silent. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Then I spank, then spank I with my tongue. This Christian heartburn. Jeremiah 15, verses 15 through 18. Jeremiah had a point in his time just like David has. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to speak. And then a Christian cannot help but to speak. And to talk if he wants to do what God wants him to do. You're to go and tell all the world. You are, as we've seen with 38 going on 39 song, you are to tell the testimony of the Lord. There's no such thing as a silent Christian. A Christian that can't proclaim the word and can't proclaim the testimony of Jesus Christ, who can't tell others about Jesus, they're, they're, he's not a Christian. So when someone says, I'm a Christian and cannot proclaim to others. Oh, but they can talk about other things. More important. Lord, make me to know my end. And the measure of my days. What it is. That I may know how frail I am. Now he's praying to God. Say, God, let me know when I'm going to die. I want not as, you know, live up the gusto, eat, drink, and be merry and all that. He wants to know so he can fulfill everything that he has before he goes. Now, Jesus Christ is the only human that knew from his birth the date he was going to die. Now, even a doctor tells you, you've got three months to live, you may have less. You, have may, you may have more. And the reason why I believe one of the reasons that God does not tell us when we're going to go is that all that last frame of life, that last month, we're going to go in there, go with a gusto and do everything we're supposed to. And that's not right. But our life is frail. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath. The length of your hand is not long compared to the rest of your body. And my age is as nothing before thee. What is 70 years to God who's been eternal? Verily, man, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. There we go. That's what Solomon says. You're nothing. What are you? Oh, I went out and got 5,000 people. No, God got them saved. He just used you as a vessel. He could have used anybody. I had the biggest church. No, no, God gave you the biggest church. Unless you did it worldly, then Satan gave you the biggest church. What, are, what is man? What is David? They're all vain. Selah. 
Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe. Emptiness. Surely there are disquieted in vain. Disquiet. It's, it's, everything is just vain. He heapeth up riches. All right. You got all the world. You got all the riches. You got all the stores. You got all the computers. You got everything. Whatever it is that that's made you rich. And knoweth not who will gather them. Inheritance. Listen, we're coming to a time in America today that you could write out a will and you could say specifically, I want to go to this one person and lawyers can fight that for, for that for another person and lose it all. I, there's a woman, that is, there's a story that goes about up in Chicago on that. She wanted to give uh, her inheritance for whatever it was, I forget what it was, but just for white kids only. Oh boy, then when she died, all the lawyers came in and they didn't grant what her will said. Even though she had a legal will, it was not granted because she said it was only for white kids. That's a violation. I've always said it is a crime of America that if, if you live with a husband and wife, you live 30, 40 years, you paid off your mortgage. You paid off your auto loan. You own everything outright. You paid your taxes. You paid everything. One of you drops dead. The surviving spouse has to pay an inheritance tax. That inheritance tax may be there goes an inheritance because she can't or he can't afford the tax. In America, God's going to judge you. Especially when you do with the tax money what you do. And now, Lord, what what yeah. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. That's all God is. Everything else is vain. You say, well, witnessing? No, that's in thee. Going to church? No, that's for thee. Going around the circle 4,000 times? No, that's for self. Going in ice cold water to stand on the surfboard? That's for self. Deliver, deliver me from all my transgressions. Knows how he goes to God. He doesn't talk to no man. And we're talking to a chief uh, Levite singer. You know, he doesn't go to the Levite and confess his sins. He goes to God. And remember, this is a song. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Well, you know, Hollywood made a movie about David and Bathsheba. How many years has it been since, and we're going from B.C. to A.D., and then Hollywood makes a movie about David's sin? Exactly what David did not, exactly what David prayed here. And his sin became foolishness to fools. And fools paid money to go see the movie. I wonder how many churches got caught up in that. Go watch a movie about David. Yeah, I've seen the movie. And just because you blot out uh, two things in a movie, and it, it, it's you get more details out of the Bible. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth. There's the definition. It says I was dumb. It's not a period. It's a comma. I opened up my mouth. Ezekiel 3.26 was the same thing. God made Ezekiel dumb. And the only time Ezekiel could speak, I believe it's in chapter 7, 
when it was ended, that only when God were to open Ezekiel's mouth, any other time, Ezekiel was dumb. Ezekiel could only speak when God spoke. So this seems to be a thing that, that, that God does to some of his prophets. Most of the nation of, of Israel were dumb when Jesus came. You know, we've got dumb kids today. They're unable to speak. When they open up their mouth, there's nothing that comes out of them. Educational. Stupidly. Remove thy stroke away from me. Now, I don't know if that's talking about a stroke stroke that we talk about today or or God putting some kind of punishment upon him. But Ezekiel again, look how we keep running with Ezekiel. Ezekiel's wife is killed by a stroke. I did not mark that verse down. I just saw it now. But Job speaks about his stroke. I am consumed by the blow of thy hand. So again, David is in sin. And God is beating him. And David is acknowledging it. He's not running from it. He's acknowledging it. When thou, God, hast rebuked, well, excuse me, when thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity. Now look what David says there. When God chastises us, when he rebukes us, it's for correction. What is correction in America when you sit in a room with clothes, food, TV, uh, exercising room, uh, medical, dental, your own security force. Be able to buy cigarettes. Be able to buy stuff so you can make yourself little cakes and cookies and, and doodads and have a good old time. That's not correction. You know Paul, Jeremiah, and Joseph, when they were in prison, they were in bonds. We'll read later on in Psalms, if we haven't read it already, that it says as far as uh, uh, Joseph, it hurt him to be put in fetters and to be bound with probably hands and feet. Paul had a Roman soldier attached to him. Everything that you do naturally in life, Paul did right there in front of that that soldier. There is no correction institution today. But David is acknowledging that God does it not to be a big meaning, but he does it for your advancement. Read Hebrews 13, I believe it is. 13, 8 through 12. Uh, excuse me, Hebrews 12, 8 through 12. That God does it as our Father, so you can be learned and what you're doing wrong. Thou markest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Now, verse 11 is talking about man in general. Verse 10, he says, me. I'm the sinner. But verse 11, God not only correcting me, he's correcting everyone that are his. If a beautiful man, well, look at his son, Absalom. He was a beautiful man. Consumed away in wickedness and died and went to hell. Don't think because you're Mr. Handsome, you're Mr. Wonderful, Mrs. Universe, or Mrs. Whatever, that foolishness. It's in uh, Proverbs chapter 31, beauty is vain, and, and that other stuff. a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. 
Many Christian women today, like Jezebel, paint their face. Surely every man is vanity, Sila. Every man, for all have sinned, for all come short of glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Don't think you are somebody, you are somebody. Because you're not. Don't think just because you're the president of the United States or you're the, the CEO of this company or you're the owner of this company. Listen, I've always thought in my mind, you know what? You go to the bathroom just like I do. You put through, you may, you know what? You may not even put food through your mouth. There are some rich people that have to have it put in intravenously. They're so sick and they got so many ulcers and they got so many problems that they can't even eat themselves. You may be put into a big, fancy graveyard, uh, dress her up, but you're still going to die. Whether they put you in cement or they put you in the ground. You have a soul like the rich man in Luke chapter 16, and he went down into hell. Don't think, listen, this is the king writing. David, the king, has been annoyed. He says, listen, every man is vanity. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. He doesn't go to Mary. You say, they didn't go, uh, Mary in the Old Testament is asterisk. He doesn't go to the priest. He goes to the Lord. And give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears. Oh, David has wet face, wet eyes. Over what? It's something that has it made him, in the beginning of this chapter, made him silent. He couldn't speak. He was ashamed to speak. That he feared in verses 4 and 5 that this was going to end his life, this sin. That all my end is going to come to go to my children, verse 6. 7, 8, and 9, he, he repents to the Lord. And he prays to the Lord. For I am a stranger with thee. How can he be a stranger unless he's away from God? And a sojourner. A sojourner is someone who's just passing on. As all my fathers were. Oh, spare me. That I may recover strength. Oh, he's lost his strength. We saw that the other day in the, in the last chapter about sin. Sin taking the strength away. Before I go hence, death, and be no more death. This is a period of sin in David's life again. It has caused silence. The sin in 38 caused pain and sorrow and suffering. This sin caused David to be without speech. He couldn't speak of the Lord any longer. He couldn't testify to the Lord any longer because he was a sinner. And we don't even know what the sin was. God did. And David prays and repents and gets right. These are songs. These are You got a sin in your life that you can't speak to the Lord? You can't speak to others? You need Psalm 39. 
You're afraid to open your mouth about the Lord? You better read Psalm 39. There is a sin in your life that's preventing you. A shut mouth Christian is vanity. Well, I want what else you would talk about though? What will you give time for your big yapper to yap? Each psalm, some psalms has has a has a, a title that you can read. Psalm thirty nine is when you cannot speak about the, about or for the Lord. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale. 